Uh, hello and welcome to the first session of the seminar from alienation from above to alienation from below. The seminar is instructed by Martin. Uh, I will read the bio and, uh, and the first procedures of the seminar. Martin is an artist, musician, and theorist working conceptually with noise and improvisation. Through his practice and writing, he explores performative forms of estrangement as a way to deal with structural alienation. Matin has exhibited and toured worldwide. He has performed in festivals such as Performa, No Fun, Club Transmediale, Arica, and Lecture and Thought in institutions such as Dutch, Call Art, uh, Dutch Art Institute, Call Arts, Bard College, Paris 8, Princeton University, and Goldsmiths College. In 2017, he completed a PhD at the University of Basque Country under the supervision of Freiburg Seer. Along with Anthony Ile, he uh, edited the book Noise and Capitalism in 2012. Uh, at C.C. Bretigny and Dramaturgia, he published Unconstituted Practice, Praxis, a book collecting his writing plus interviews and performances. Both books are available online. Antoneil and Matin are currently in the final stages of editing the volume What is to be done under real subsumption, which will come out by Archive Books and Mute. And Urbanomic will publish, uh, I think this year, I'm not sure, uh, his book Social Dissonance. Martin is part of the band's Billy Bao and Regular and has over 100 releases in different labels worldwide. And he's also a co-host at a very good podcast with Miguel Prado, the Social Discipline Podcast. And uh, he also took part in Documenta 14 in 2017. And as far as the seminar goes, I'm going to read the description. So alienation is back from xenofeminism uh, feminism to Afro-pessimism and from decolonial studies to discussions around Artificial intelligence, alienation is at the center of critical discussions about capitalism, subjectivity, and agency. Whether it is to criticize essentialist notions of gender, to investigate the potential for rationality and technology, to explore and generate new strange worlds, to problematize a universal we, or to explore the concept of NATO alienation in regards to the slave, there is something about the concept of alienation that seems necessary for grasping our times. During this four session seminar, we will explore the Marxian perspectives on the subject juxtaposing them with recent discoveries in neuroscience in order to work through contemporary thinking on alienation. We will develop a new understanding of alienation that interconnects alienation from above, i.e. the social economic forces of the forms of determination, to alienation from below, which are neurocomputational mechanisms that produce what Thomas Metzinger has called this, the phenomenal self-model. In his work, Marx gives an account of alienation from above in regards to how human activity becomes alienated in the exchange abstraction. Importantly, inverting the histories of philosophy, Marx says capital is the active subject and people are merely its object. However, at the level of consciousness, we often believe that we are subjects that can separate ourselves from the object. In the seminar, we will develop an understanding of how the subjective and objective components of a nation are entwined. The key question we look at it at is then if experiences are something unique and specific to the self or if they are manufactured through generic superpersonal mechanisms which they are used for ideological purposes. This is why the seminar will incorporate also the work of Thomas Metzinger to allow our understanding of alienation from below. Metzinger claims that selfhood and the first person perspective emerge out of subpersonal representation mechanisms. By analyzing different phenomena such as out of body experiences, pathologies such as Crawford syndrome or experiments such as the body transfer illusion, he develops the theory of how self-consciousness comes to be to what he defines as phenomenal self model. Uh, key questions that we will deal with across the seminar include, what is the conceptual first person perspective and how does one create a sense of mindness? Uh, what does alienation mean in Marx's work and how does it differ from the first person perspective? What is the interconnection between existential and economic meanings of alienation and why there's so much confusion about it? How is our understanding of subjectivity determined by capitalist reproduction? How can the philosophy of Thomas Metzinger elaborate on the Marxian understandings of alienation? How does Fanon and Winter's notion of sociogeny helps us understand the intersection between alienation from above and alienation from below? What are the uh, psychological consequences of alienation and how do they relate to what Cecil Malaspina calls the mental state of noise? And yes, this was quite an introduction. So please, Martin, take it away. The floor okay. is yours. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really glad to be here and uh, I'm not sure if we will be able to managed to answer all those questions, but uh, I guess we will try. And yeah, maybe if 
if you, if you think it's okay, maybe we can have just like a very short round of presentations, just like very briefly, you know, just, uh, uh, yeah, your name, where you are. I guess you, some of you might know each other, but I don't. And uh, if you just bas basically uh, just say your name and, uh, you know, where you are, just to have an awareness and maybe why you are interested in the course or, or in the notion, just very briefly to, you know, to start getting to know each other just a bit. G will that be okay? Okay, great. We do it like a clock here in the Zoom thing. So, Igor. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Igor. I'm a Brazilian artist. I'm, I'm based in, in Rio Grande do Norte. Uh, I stayed in Brazil in the northeast, northeast part of it. But um, yes, this is my first seminar at the New Center. I'm, I'm quite a bit nervous, yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy also to be here with you, learn with you and try something that I'm not very accustomed like Max works or, or Lukash works or Max's theory in general. So I, I hope I can, I can uh, connect with these kinds of uh, social theories, economic, political theories with art or contemporary art. And how does this relation between alienation and contemporary art happens or proceeds yes uh, should i name anyone someone someone maybe the next the next uh, gabriel gabriel yeah hi uh hi everyone my name is gabriel i'm i'm brazilian too i'm based here in Rio Grande do sul the opposite uh, state uh, then ego and actually, I am very, it's my first time here in the new center. And I, I don't think I have a good English in stress intermediary, so I can understand everything, but my speaking is not so good. So I'm sorry for, you know, anything. And uh, I'm, I'm interested about the concept of alienation in front of Anon and how to link it to philosophy of techniques. And actually I'm studying a lot Bernard Stiegler and Yoki Hui. So yeah, I, I think it's my interesting for now. So I need to name another one. Uh, I think Mateus. <laughs> okay. Um... So I am also from Brazil. I'm from Rio de Janeiro. Um, I'm a PhD student at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro and, and my, my research interests are basically in, well, in, in materialist philosophy, let's, let's put it like that. So um, pretty much interested in, in Marxist works and, and all these, let's say different sorts of, of applications of of the materialist method to well let's say to, to new materials let's put it like that so it is um, a very interesting seminar to me as well and yeah very glad to be here with you all this is my second yeah second semester here in the new center so I'm I'm a bit more used perhaps to to the dynamics but I think I think it's enough. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't know whether. Yeah, I mean, uh, here I have uh, Gabriel, but uh, I know. Uh, well, uh, yeah, if if Gabriel. Uh, I can also present myself now. Hello. Yes. Yes. Sure. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, yeah, so I'm Guilherme, I'm Portuguese, <laughs> and I'm based in uh, Berlin. Uh, I'm, my domain is in music. I, I mostly work as a music producer, and I'm going to start my PhD soon, uh, mainly exploring AI models and artifacts as quasi-objects and epistemic tools towards new generations. Uh, I mostly integrate aesthetic, philosophical, sociocultural, and phenomenological research practices to inquire meaning, value, and sociocultural statutory contexts. 
And yeah, I'm interested in this class in specific because you're a musician. I've actually followed your work for a while since you released on Presto, which I'm very fond of. And yeah, I thought there could be some com commonalities in like forms of otherness, interacting with tools as quasi objects. And yeah, that's mostly why I'm taking this class. Uh, Martin, you're muted. Uh, unmute uh, yourself. Oh. Okay, great. Uh, and then, so who, I don't know who if we have different orders, but uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, Gabriel or Eduardo. Hi. Um, yeah, um, Eduardo. I'm based. Uh, I'm based in London. Um, although I'm doing a PhD in uh, media and cultural studies at the University of Naples. And I'm looking at platform work, uh, so alienation is kind of a key. This is my first uh, seminar here at the new center, so I don't really, I'm not very familiar with the procedure. But um, yeah, I'm interested in alienation, of course, in terms of critique, but uh, and that I have a relatively good understanding of. But I'd like to work with the idea in a more speculative way, trying to think about you know becoming artificial, becoming uh, artifactual. Um, so yeah, uh, very interested to see where this goes. Maybe uh, maybe you can uh, name somebody. Yeah yeah sure. Um, I'll see um, uh, Felipe. I guess I'm the only Felipe. Hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Eduardo. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, this is my second semester in the critical philosophy uh, certificate uh, program here at the New Center. Um, the first semester being my serious academic background. Um, I, I will plan to spend the next year and a half developing what I think will be a pedagogical program for uh, philosophy in the early, early infancy. And uh, one of the questions I've been trying, I, I plan to tackle in the near future is this, um, this I'm not, uh, I'm, I think, I, I sense, I tend to, um, question if subjectivity even has a place in the in the in a in a pedagogical program for philosophy. Uh, so um, and your uh, your uh, your talk at the Do Documento Thirteen was very uh, formative for me. The recording of the talk as well as the others. So I'm curious to see where this leads to. Thank you. Uh or well, or maybe so. Maybe it's a bit uh, random, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we have the same. But anyway, so uh, Selma, do you mind? Um, yeah, presenting yourself. Um, hello, my name is Selma. I'm a curator and researcher based in Berlin. Um, originally, I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina, where I graduated in art history and computer literature at Faculty of Philosophy. Um, I've also attended the postgraduate program in curatorial practices uh, at Cold Magazan in Grenoble, France, um, and I hold masters in media art cultures, uh, a joint master program between uh, universities in uh, Denmark, Austria, Poland, and Hong Kong. Um, I also co-founded uh, the new liquidity platform, uh, which is an um, interdisciplinary research platform for artistic and curatorial practices. And right now I'm working on a series of immersive binaural sound blocks um, that are reactive to participants' movements and locations. Um, so at the moment I'm doing a lot of work with uh, sound artists and um, architects. Um, in two weeks from now, actually, we're going to south of Spain to Tremont residency to uh, to work on this uh, project. So I'm quite excited. Um, regarding this seminar, I already did a project called Alientopias, which was very much inspired by xenofeminist notions of alienation. And um, I would very much like to continue. Uh, it, it is very much related to, to part of my research connected to uh, schizoanalysis and uh, cyber culture. 
and I think it's um, I would um, I would basically just like to explore further um, how uh, different notions, uh, different concepts related to um, notion of alienation, you know, in order to understand how uh, they helped interpret the, the cultural uh, conjecture and how they could help us the new if they are really new, uh, uh, if it's a really new human condition of, of disconnected times. Uh, uh, Matthew, please. Yeah, thanks. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm in, uh, I'm in Montreal right now. I'm just finishing a, uh, a master's in philosophy at Concordia. I guess I, I think there are a number of I guess reasons that I'm interested in this class. I think they and they range kind of from the with the personal to the, to the theoretical. I feel like you know the past couple of years um, there's been you know obviously I think deep feelings of alienation amongst like me and my, my milieu in relationship to platform capitalism, the way that um, that technology is continuing to reshape our social world at you know really quite uh, extreme paces. And then I think I've also, I'm just finishing a master's uh, where my thesis was on Heidegger and some general accounts of ontological alienation, and especially the relationship uh, that Derrida identifies uh, as the kind of the Western metaphysical movement of attempting to overcome alienation or the dialectical movement in which alienation is overcome as being the kind of actually the horizon in which metaphysics kind of unfolds in, in the Western world. So I think that that from a very high level is where my interest in alienation comes from. And then honestly, I wanted to read more Marx. I have not read enough Marx yet, so that's the other reason. Thanks. Uh, uh, Denise, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Denise Luna Acevedo. I am an architect and researcher from Mexico. I am a certificate student for the post-planetary universal design, but I'm here, I'm an architect um, that is interested as, in architecture as world making more than anything else. So my interest in the seminar is to basically learn more about the nuances of, uh, let's say, um, what or where even alienation is, right? Um, and even and if these nuances potentially can construct worlds or how can they construct worlds so yeah thank you um great thank you so much um yeah uh, Paige, I, I don't know how you pronounce your name uh, but yeah if you can yeah it's Paige. yeah just like Paige in a book said it perfect um i am based in los angeles right now i'm a multidisciplinary artist with a practice that includes music and my work explores intersubjectivity and how the ecological body relates to its environment with a focus on meaning making through ritual. So um, I've dabbled, dabbled a bit into economic theories through the lens of ritualization of the financial market. And my work also, my research expands into brain plasticity of how we relate to our environment. So I'm also curious about like what types of neuroscience you're referencing to um, that was in the syllabus. So yeah, excited for the class. Um, great. Um, uh, uh, Cassia? Hi, uh, hi everyone. My name is Cassia Siqueira. I'm a Brazilian, also Brazilian philosophy student. And I'm also a noise musician. I'm currently finishing a master thesis on Reza's intelligence and spirits, and I'm focusing on its program of uh, critique of transcendental structures, allied with what he calls uh, the project of fundamental alienation of the human subject. Uh, in, the, in the thesis, it, it is also related and informed by a constructive reading uh, and approach to Wittgenstein's concept of forms of life. That that's basically it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, Sebastian. Uh, hello, I'm Sebastian. Sebastian Yanis from Mexico City. I'm an art critic. I'm very interested in the critic of capitalism. So I'm very interested in the alienation and stuff. I'm not very into it, but I will really glad to be here and I don't know I'm very interested in matching process in art and I'm glad to be here yeah, 
Great. Um, so I'm just like uh, Alexandra. Um, yeah. Um, hi, sorry, my my uh, the internet's really, really bad. And if I put on my camera, everything glitches out for me. So I just leave it off and try and fix it later. Um, I'm in Melbourne in Australia. Uh, I'm a dancer or I was up until um, quite recently because I had a really bad accident. Um, so I'm sort of interested in self alienation and also, I guess, uh, post-colonial theory, how that um, in Australia particularly, but in general, how that sort of relates to alienation from land and culture and the manifestations of that. Um, yeah, this is my second seminar, but I'm just starting out this semester. So also new. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I mean, the people who have who is still left, uh, if yeah, if you can just uh, go for it, unless you don't want to. I, uh, okay. I and Ward. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay, Eduardo. You can go ahead. Uh, I and Ward. I'm also based in Brazil. Happy to see many Brazilians here. Uh, I live in Curitiba. I am a visual artist and researcher and cultural producer. And my interest in alienation is still related to post-colonial studies and also have a better grasp of the Marxian concept of alienation. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Cruz. I am based in Oakland, California, or, or unceded Ohlone land. Uh, my academic background is in media and architectural theory. Um, I've been taking New Center seminars in critical philosophy for about a year and a half. And I also work as a writer, artist, and researcher. Uh, and the works of Marx, the Xenofeminist Collective, and uh, Metzinger actually have all been really influential on my thinking and practice in different ways. So I'm really looking forward to the course. Thanks so much. Um, so is there somebody? Uh, Edna is uh, still yeah. okay. Great. Yeah, it's me. Um, let me put the camera. Hi, I'm Edna. I'm from Mexico, but I'm based in Barcelona. Um, this is my second year as a student in the certificate program. Um, I used to study philosophy in Mexico, but now I am a sex worker here. Um, I have a Marxist ba background, so that's why I'm here. Also, I'm a punk musician, so I'm very interested in noise and that kind of stuff. Yeah, is there somebody left or is it everybody? No, I, I think it's good for Neve to introduce herself. Like she's ah, okay. here already. And Neve uh, is already yeah. here? Yes, yes. Ah, fantastic. Great. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Neve. Yeah, my camera phone as well. Um, I just got off from a really, really um long flight. So if I'm a little bit incoherent, I apologize. Can you see me? Ah, yes, perfect. Um, so I am a cultural producer. Um, I'm also a writer. I'm really interested in um, themes of alienation. This like word and concept has been with me for a very long time. I've like, encountered it in so many books. Um, and I also have a very ambivalent relationship to xenofeminism, but they, and, and also cyber feminism, but they've all really informed my thinking. And I like to think think about um, how alienation can act as a form of enablement um, and, and world making and, and yeah and transformation um, and yes I really love the uh, reading list that was also one of the reasons why I signed up to this because I just would love the opportunity to talk about Sylvia Winters um, I worked with her with with her writings um, on my master's thesis that I did on a um, on Octavia Butler's book called uh, Xenogenesis. Um, and so I'm yeah excited for the conversation that all of this will um, will inspire and, and all of that. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, so is that everybody or well if or at least everybody who wants to present? Okay, that's that's great. So this is my first course here at the new center. So I'm pretty new and uh, I'm not so, yeah, I, there's like this specific uh, kind of issues uh, regarding presentations and the people who want the credit that Nif 
uh, towards the end of the session will deal with. Um, well, I think we have also Raphael in terms if there is like some technical problems and so on. So I guess what I will do is to start by presenting why do I have such a deep interest in the concept of alienation and then maybe we can start slowly to dig into uh, yeah, Marx's text, but I guess it uh, will be important uh, or, you know, the Lukács text really complements quite a lot. Uh, it's like a very much more sophisticated kind of approach to the concept of alienation. Um, and please, so please feel free to ask any question at any given time. Um, so why alienation? I guess for me, it was a way to try to understand what coming, you know, I come from the practice of noise and improvisation. And certainly within improvisation, the issue of freedom is a very important one. But it's one that it kind of takes for granted a certain amount of agency that the individual has, uh, which I will argue is quite a liberal understanding of freedom. So, I mean, it's a, alienation is an extremely contested term. Is um, you know, I mean, it was extremely important for Hegel uh, in order to develop. For him, it was a way of externalization in which, you know, it was a necessary kind of uh, concept in order to uh, basically say things were not naturally given there, but that we in uh, are responsible for forming the object that we are externalizing with. Um, so for him, it's an extremely important concept for the development of uh, self-consciousness. But then um, around you know, the 40s, uh, 1840s, when, uh, when the young Hegelians or the people in, you know, trying to actually make sense of what uh, Hegel was trying to do with their system, with his system, there was a very rich discussion in regards to, okay, what did Hegel actually mean and how did it manifest? So according to, you know, like within this Linke Hegelian or, or, or young Hegelians, there was this discussion of like, okay, what's real alienation uh, coming from? And a very important um, argument was made by Faulbach, uh, Ludwig Faulbach. And uh, he described how the alienation was happening in our projection uh, into God or into religion. So that basically we were attributing human qualities to God. And that was a form of alienation that we were kind of losing our um, capacities. Our He had this very specific term, which we will look when we look into Marx, which is Gattungswesen, which is usually translated and as, as a species being. It can be also, uh, you know, generic being but Besen can also be essence. So this was a very context, uh, contested term that, and this discussion, but it, it was a very fruitful kind of discussion. And it was one in which Marx um, kind of replied by saying that the alienation occurs not in our projection to God, but in our productive activity. When we work, and this here we will look specifically at the early description of Marx within alienation, is how through in the labor process uh, we externalize our own production and our, you know, and in doing this we are also externalizing this kind of what he said to be the human qualities of um, a species being. No, Gattin's Besen. Um, here, um, there is a problem which the concept of alienation has always, uh, or, you know, historically has been criticized for containing some essential residues. You know, what is it that is uh, alienated from? Like, what is it that we are alienated from? Uh, was it something else previously that we had and then through the process of alienation, are we losing it? Or, and this is uh, what I will argue, uh, no, there was no such a thing as essence, 
uh, and what we have is a kind of process of alienation different that relates uh, that contains different process of alienation that relate to each other determine each other but non uh, is not uh, there is no possibility to actually uh, get rid of it this alienation is a kind of key concept of modernity it's like when the secular when secularism comes into being and with Descartes is like opening a can of worms where you know what is it that we are is an open question that is you know open for consideration and i guess this is uh, a huge question that we will deal with in the whole seminar but is one the that that is a head pack it's a very difficult kind of question but in trying to answer it i guess we will start to define you know like uh, different discourses around it and what is it that we take to be either the subject the self the individual uh, though, and how all this relate to the structural forms of determination of capital uh, mode of production so yeah um, I mean I think Marx is extremely crucial and I think we need to start with Marx because he presents a very compelling argument uh, one you know that it has to do you know with the way in which you know how through our productive activity the concept of alienation functions and from there because we are engaging and we are part of this system you know like I think it will give us clues in ways in which we are determined with and another I think important issue that the notion of alienation puts on the table is like what is our room to maneuver you know what what you know it, do we have some capacities that can actually challenge the current conditions or is it uh, already you know everything you know we are just fully determined by you know the exchange abstraction for example and um, here maybe the two texts for today are quite interesting um, because on the first one which has been criticized by among others Althusser for being quite idealist is uh, is is it gives some kind of hope uh, it gives some kind of possibilities you know it gives some kind of room to maneuver while in the other one in Lukacs um, on the issue of reification we could see perhaps the first totalizing moment when he explains how the reifying process uh, presupposes that capitalism and the exchange process has to work at the level of totality and within that like the character of the commodity structure is determining um, all the different forms of uh, that structural society the legal system rationality itself and so on so here is a much more uh, kind of um, bleak in the sense of giving you very little room to maneuver or basically giving uh, capital a very totalizing power or force uh, so I mean in a, when I was reading it I was like kind of oh wow well, it's uh, well, you know kind of hard kind of core attack it could be used as a kind of hardcore attack to the rationalist tendencies of uh, you know that some of you might well be you know engaging with so yeah maybe as some people to mention and I guess I also did on Seno you know mentioned the, 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 the work of Seno phenomenism in regards to alienation I was thinking that perhaps it actually um, the critique that um, well I'll bring 
a very uh, specific kind of comment on regards to the discussions that I was mentioning uh, before that were happening around the 1840s. So in, yeah, I guess it was 1845 or 1844, 1845, I don't remember, uh, Max Stirner, who was part of these um, discussions uh, uh, of the Linke Hegelianer, came up with a book uh, called Diego of its own. And, you know, I mean, it's been, it's a, yeah, it's a very, well, it's an interesting book. It's very, very, he's a very influential figure within, you know, libertarian or anarchist circles. And, and the reason for it is because he gives an account of the ego or the unique or the, 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 the as, something which is uh, it can escape um, any forms of determination or because he perhaps at that time was giving the most uh, radical critique to the idea of uh, man or species being to that Ludwig uh, Farback had so it was just like, okay, Farbach, you are criticizing religion, and then you're seeing that uh, the human, you know, is separating itself uh, through these kind of projections. But what is it? What do you mean by man, by human? But you know, like what by this concept? What 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 is it? And then he goes in to say that that's a kind of abstraction, that is an spook is. It's, it's a, an another form of religion. So he says that all these kind of universal concepts that they are just abstract, they are forms of projection. That he in his uh, book goes absolutely against it, like criticizing it very, very thoroughly. So, I mean, yeah, he's an interesting figure, uh, but uh, that, that critique actually Marx took very seriously. Uh, he, go, he, he, he took it so seriously that he spends hundreds of pages in the German ideology, which was written, uh, I guess, 45, 46, uh, 47. So is uh, after the text that we are reading now. So after, so just to kind of put in context uh, the text, the early text of Marx that we have here on the strange labor, he will, to certain issues that he, uh, Marx is presenting here, especially this conception of uh, species being, he will then make uh, fun out of it uh, in later works because it's, you know, they, he, he considers them a form of abstraction, you know, a form of kind of something, um, that cannot be taken for granted and this concept or the concepts or you know these uh, notions need to be understood historically in relations in its relationship to the forms of determination of the mode of production that we are part of so it's like it's often been discussed as this anthropological notion the thing of a species being um, and maybe just another introductory remark to the text and to these possible two different marks. There is a very long ongoing discussion which is connected. So whether there is an early Marx and a later Marx, and this is what Althusser calls the epistemological break, or uh, there is a continuity. So the concept of alienation is crucial uh, for, for, for it because many people will argue that alienation has a still kind of many Hegelian residues. That is, uh, it has a kind of idealist kind of qualities. And um, so the thing is that here in this early text, 
Marx has okay he 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 understands that in uh the labor process we are kind of externalizing some of our characteristics and our relationship from each other and from nature you know so all these things that we will go through while we're reading the text but um and here uh, is a remark that Chris Arthur makes that I think is uh, very helpful. He, Marx, by this time, he didn't develop all these kind of concepts like um, the value form, uh, exchange, exchange value, um, you know, the, the way that wage relationship works, you know. The, so there is like many concepts within the workings of capital so many different forms of mediation that complicate much more this early concept of alienation that he had so i think this is um crucial to understand that okay so maybe there is a kind of more naive understanding of alienation in this part but i think it's still uh, very powerful and helpful and it will trigger you know, I'm sure we can work. Um, I'm not sure how we will do with time to complement each other, uh, each text. I mean, certainly there are, you know, I mean, as I said, the Paul, um, Lukács text is very sophisticated and it has certain moments. So we'll see how we do it, whether we bring some uh, of the discussion simultaneously uh, while we're reading certain things so we kind of deal with them parallelly or maybe you know maybe you know one after the other we'll see did this really it depends in regards to the discussion and how things develop um, but um, maybe if somebody has some questions or comments or anything that wants to just like uh, say or you know just um, please feel free. Oh, Xenogenesis. Actually, I don't know the book. Uh, being from the dealers, I think both sets could be even accused of some sort of effects bias, especially Lukacs. Yeah, in fact, um, yeah, is um, is he himself uh, writing the preface to the 1967 edition? criticized totally as a kind of idealist, you know, kind of book and uh, as a very subjectivist uh, kind of account on, on you know, on the book. So he, he was, okay, you know, I guess he was uh, asked to do this, you know, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a extremely important. This book, um history and class consciousness um well um the the book in which this text is part of was uh extremely influential both for the frankfurt school but also for the board's uh, concept of the spectacle and the situationist is 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 it had massive massive uh influence is is really it cannot be negated but as i mentioned he himself became very critical of it. Um, let's see if there is a, okay. Yeah, but Lucas is also all in for the discipline and rational commitment to put capitalism or commodification of society down. Yeah, 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 that's, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's true. And he thinks in this early that by, you know, the proletarian, by being uh, the ones, uh, it's like the, the proletariat it could be it could become the subject and object of history because they are the ones you know who are producing you know who are you know producing this form of uh externalization and you know putting kind of moving you know the form of capitalism so that's you know he thinks that they have the potential to the revolutionary potential uh to become conscious of in the ways you know that how we are determined or how we are um, conditioned by the capitalist relation. So, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, the revolutionary role of reason in a certain way. But uh, I guess that's 
that's the tricky bit, you know. If reason, to what extent is reason determined by, you know, the capitalist mode of production, you know, and that's my key question, which I couldn't give you a very good answer, but I think this is something that we will keep discussing through the whole um, seminar, uh, certainly. I have just like a, a small comment, something that uh, came in my mind about, uh, I, I think I think there, there is something like in uh, in Lukacs also about, about precisely like the role of the class that has this, uh, this certain attribute of reason and that and that keeps this, uh, this thing alive that is also very important for theories, at least like on the uh, 60s and 80s and 70s for like theories of, about standpoint theories. Uh, both for race and for gender as well that like it, it is a an, an account of the subject that it becomes very criticized but also very popularized on like the same movement that is done for the proletariat in the early Lukacs is done also in other like other subjectiv subjectivities under any relationship of domination for other like uh, fields of inquiry this became a thing I think in uh, cultural studies in general and also like with the surge of area studies in the US, I think it was very frequent that uh, the standpoint, the cognitive standpoint of like someone under a certain relationship of domination was exalted in a way. And I think that this is the biggest, uh, the biggest clash between, uh, you, you can observe the clash between Lukács and Althusser also on like on those receptions of Marxism out like on area studies or in cultural studies and this type of thing, because like with uh, both of them try to, to relate to that same problem, but in very, very different ways and very clashing ways even. Mm. Yeah, no, I, th I think you're right. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the, the differences between uh, Althusser and and, and and Lukacs are so extreme because um, you know for for Althusser you know there is no subject you know there is a subject you know, history has no subject so it's like just like the way that the interpolations kind of function the subject is just the tool used to interpolate as a specific subjects within capitalism but this is extremely problematic. So, you know, I mean, he, he was all about the analysis of a stru structural forms of analysis and, you know, certainly not giving any, you know, I mean, I guess, yeah, uh, non-anti-human uh, kind of not gi not giving any possible or, very you know, being very critical about any form of subjectivism or any, you know, giving to groups or individuals any, you know, uh, form of agency for him, you know, the determination in the last instance is economic. So yeah, the contrast is kind of uh, extreme. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe we can jump into the book and uh, sorry, into the first text, unless somebody else wants to, you know, has some comment or wants to say something. Um, okay, so if not, um we we can go i have uh a very you know rudimentary powerpoint just i took some kind of uh quotes so maybe if we just go through some of them and you know kind of anchor you know the discussion within some specific uh issues in the text as i as i mentioned I haven't worked out well whether we will do this, uh, you know, Lukacs parallel to, you know, like jumping, you know, into some comments or issues that Marx says, then, you know, maybe complemented with something that is talked about in Lukacs. Yeah, let's see. This, this is up for, for grabs. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, and um, and let's start with this. Uh, so for, yeah, so this is the. I think the beginning is pretty strong. I mean, I must say that I I still find it, even though it's a very early. I mean, I don't I don't usually see it 
in readings or in seminars this text so often, but uh, it's a short but powerful uh, text. Um, yeah. Um, so um, maybe uh, I read the first one, and then you know maybe we can take turns to read just to have different voices, and then you know maybe. Um, While well, I'm sure discussions will come up, but um, so so I'll, st I'll start reading. Uh, Karl Marx's Economic Philosophical Manuscripts or a of 1844. We have proceeded from the premises of political economy. Um, sorry, I I have to apologize. The whole thing about Stirner and the critique, sorry, sorry, this is, it just came, you know, I, I was just kind of remembering that I was going to say, you know, about the, uh, uh, the xenofeminism. So I went into this whole tangent about uh, species being and the critique of essence and, and yeah, this is just to say that in the way that, um, the Seno feminist talk in their manifesto, it seems to be falling into this kind of, uh, you know, by, by, you know, it seems to be quite a, a historical account of alienation as if, you know, um, in the sense of saying that alienation is always a kind of process that is kind of occurring and that uh, on the one hand, yeah, it's a kind of form of externalization, but then does this presuppose that we have some specific kind of characteristics that uh, uh, make us uh, have, be part of this process? So um, I was thinking, you know, to what extent, you know, can the critique of either Stirner or, uh, or Marx himself that Marx makes to his own, to uh, the kind of uh, account that uh, Xenofeminist gives. And, and this, you know, we will talk and bring different perspectives on the concept of alienation and, you know, but what, you know, like some, uh, like for example, Diane Bauer talk about, uh, who is part of the Xenofeminist talk, or refer to alienation as that which differentiates us from um, other animals. So is this capacity, uh, you know, like taking kind of uh, Wilfrid Sellers forms of like uh, thought, you know, that is our capacity of, that we have for thinking and understanding ourselves as thinking beings. So there's the, the kind of meta kind of capacity. But then, you know, then that's, yeah, I, I'm interested to see how the discussion go and whether we think that actually this, uh, to some extent, might be, you know, kind of uh, fall into a Hegelian understanding of alienation or, you know, giving, even though they are totally anti-essentialist, they actually end up giving uh, to the subject of alienation this essential quality of self-externalization. And whether it's historical or not, I think this will be part of the discussion that we will, you know, engage with. Um, but yeah, I start by reading the first um, paragraph of this text. Uh, unless somebody has a question, I'm just going to check in the chat whether... Uh, uh, okay. There's, uh, maybe it would be nice to do them comparatively, given Luke's expression very thin, Marx very thin, and becomes a bit rarefied uh, of its own. Good, yeah. I had one question on Marx's text, but perhaps will be better later. Okay, good. And then, in of the middle of the past century, at the middle of the past century, this text changed the whole Marxist academy and militancy in Mexico, taking the people apart from the uh, PC 
uh, Communist Party and, uh, and the Soviet program, which I consider a necessary step, but less scientific and rigorous. Wow. Okay. So that's good. And then, you know, once uh, we go into the text, you can formulate the question. So I'll just read finally this uh, paragraph. We have proceeded from the premises of political economy. We have accepted its language and its laws. We presupposed private property, the separation of labor, capital and land, and of wages, profit of capital and rent of land. Likewise, division of labor, competition, the concept of exchange value, etc. On the basis of political economy itself, in its own words, we have shown that the worker sinks to the level of a commodity and becomes indeed the most rich of commodities, that the wretchedness of the worker is in inverse proportion to the power and magnitude of his production, that the necessary result of competition is the accumulation of capital in a few hands and thus the restoration of monopoly in a more terrible form, and that finally the distinction between capitalist and land rentier, like that between the tiler of the soil and the factory worker, disappears, and that the whole of society must fall apart into two classes, property owners and propertyless workers. Yeah, this is um, very good. Um, I, I guess there is a simile, uh, like the what both texts certainly do is to point out at the forms of naturalization of bourgeois thought how they take for granted, you know, either, you know, the, you know, property or y y this kind of, um, that, or their understanding of value or how value is produced. So it's a kind of, uh, denaturalization, which I guess is the kind of Marxist project, you know, like kind of to uncover that which appears to us as obvious and then see how in the forms of our own engagement in production and reproduction actually that uh, uncovers a much more complicated kind of forms of process so there is a, a kind of uh, similitude in which both i guess texts kind of start um yeah, as I said, any any moment, please feel free to jump. And um, otherwise, I'll, I'll keep uh, going. I, d I just wanted to maybe yeah. add something or just maybe pose a question. Sure. Um, it, it feels like, you know, for the question of alienation in this quote, at least, it, the, it kind of plays out between the relationship between the worker and the commodity form. And I think you see that in, in Luke Cox as well. The question has something to do with this passage from the worker sinking to the level of a commodity and in the relationship that that brings between the worker's activity and the um, specifically, I think of the social relation that the commodity form institutes, right? That's one thing I feel like hasn't necessarily been brought up in or maybe foregrounded yet is the question of the relationship between the commodity form and the social relation, because in both cases, in both Marx and Lutex, it does seem to, to feel like alienation emerges out of, out of a specific modification of the social relationship um, that has to do with abstraction maybe. And if we view it that way, then it feels like at least in this context, the like alienation abstraction couplet and what their corresponding oppositions are and how that opposition is structured seems like the place that like that this is played out on in a, in a sense, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's really great. Yeah, that's that's thankful because I mean, I guess what then he goes is like the process of objectification, you know, what what happens in that kind of, that's, that's the kind of subject-object 
inversion that constantly happens in capitalism? What what is it that you know? What happens when you're you know you're externalizing uh, you know in the objectifying uh, your 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 own production, your own capacities into you know into becoming this uh, commodity? So that's that's uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, that uh, that what we um, be working and seeing how this happens. Um, I was trying to find uh, whether I had it directly. The uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, let's yeah to bring this parallel. Um, maybe just to bring this parallel, I'll go and actually bring the quote by the the, the very beginning of uh, Lukacs, because um, yeah, we will see the parallels could work actually quite well. So okay, seventeen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Well, okay. So this is the. So then we go um, just to the very beginning of Lukacs' um, text. Um, will anybody be willing to read? I can read it. Ah, thank you. Okay. Um... Reification and the Consciousness of the Proletariat, George Lukács, 1923. To be radical is to go to the root of the matter. For man, however, the root is man himself. Marx's critique of Hegel's philosophy of right. It is not accident that Marx should have begun with an analysis of commodities, when, in the two great works of his major period, he set out to portray capitalist society in its totality and to lay bare its fundamental nature. For at this stage in the history of mankind, there is no problem that does not ultimately lead back to the question, and there is no solution that could not be found in the solution to the riddle of commodity structure. Of course, the problem can only be discussed with this degree of generality if it achieves the depth and breadth to be found in Marx's own analysis. That is to say, the problem of commodities must not be considered in isolation or even regarded as the central problem in economics, but as the central structural problem of capitalist society in all its aspects. Only in this case can the structure of commodity relations be made to yield a model of all the objective forms of bourgeois society together with all the subjective forms corresponding to them. Yeah, great. So obviously here there is uh, that very big difference that uh, in the early texts uh, of M Marx, he didn't have uh, develop the riddle of commodity structure, i.e. the double character, you know, of use value and, uh, and value. So he didn't have an account of what happens in this process when labor is subjectified, you know, the process of abstraction, you know, how this abstraction occurs, what, how specifically, you know, the, the, the specific characteristics or concrete labor then, you know, becomes, you know, becomes abstract labor in this process. So that's uh, obviously huge, huge um, difference. But um, so I guess, yeah, here in Lukacs, we have a much more, you know, we he give us the tools to try to understand how the process of naturalization uh, occurs in bourgeois thought by not being able to identify the kind of complex relationships that produce those forms of, you know, of, of naturalization of disappearances that you just take them for granted. Um, yeah, so I'll go back. Um, yeah, if somebody wants to say something, please feel free. Uh, um, I just wanted to ask if anyone knew um, the word that Marx originally used for property in 
German, like, because that has obviously two meanings in English and one of them is more material effort and the other one's an actual landed plot. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Eigentum, um, but uh, in fact, uh, Marx, Marx property of Deutsch. Uh, uh, Marx, uh, well, just, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll see, somebody else might know? I'm, I'm also not sure, but I, I also think it is Eigenton. I think it preserves the ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, uh, could you please repeat the ambiguity was between, uh, you know, what was the ambiguity between the two? Uh, the, what you just mentioned, I, I just kind of um, missed um, it. I was just thinking of, because um, I think in the first uh, quote that you read from Marx, it was uh, very specifically um, property as uh, something you would live on perhaps and inherit and be able to pass down in this kind of thing, as opposed to material assets that are maybe more like ephemeral mm -hmm. but prop like you know this is my pen it's property it can be quite a and then that commodity structure that comes into that mm -hmm. yeah um yeah I, th I th yeah i think as far as i think in german it contains uh this uh ambiguity i'll 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 try to i'll check i'll i'll, have, I'll write it down ambiguity yeah um so okay so talking into the objectification of labor um yeah what is it uh, that occurs um so yeah will somebody be willing to talk i uh, sorry I to, read, to read the to read the quote i can go thank you uh, so objectification of labor the worker becomes all the poorer the more wealth he produces the more his production increases in power and size. The worker becomes an ever cheaper commodity, the more commodities he creates. The devaluation of the world of man is in direct proportion to the increasing value of the world of things. Labor produces not only commodities, it produces itself and the worker as a commodity. And this at the same rate at which it produces commodities in general. This fact expresses merely that the object which labor produces, labor's product, confronts it as, as something alien, as a power independent of the producer. The product of labor is labor which has been embodied in an object which has become material. It is the objectification of labor. Labor's realization is its objectification. Under these economic conditions, this realization of labor appears as loss of realization for the workers, objectification as loss of the object and bondage to it, appropriation as estrangement, as alienation. Yeah, so I think here we have like a very, you know, like they've start to have the very kind of clear definition of what Marx means. Um, as you know, his his concept of alienation, um, and then I would like to bring, if um, yeah, and uh, once again Lukacs and see how it works with this, um, with you know when he discusses the subject object relationship. Um, Matt, can I ask a question? Yes, of course, of course, yeah. About that, about that prior quote. Yeah. Um. Because part of part of that quote, it feels like what Marx is saying is that in the in when labor produces an object, there's a kind of a necessary separation between labor and that object, and that separation in which the object confronts the laborer or the laboring process as alien is part of the kind of the alienation, or that's one of the conditions of alienation. But is that condition like, or is that co confrontation of the object? Um, as an alien force predicated itself on the the structure of domination of the of the 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 capitalist who's taking the object or is already in the relationship between the subject and 
in the productive relationship between the subject and object, is there already a form of alienation there? Or is it, or is it entirely predicated on the kind of dominating social relationship? Well, I, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's simply, um, it's necessary. It's a kind of necessary precondition for, uh, the abstraction of, 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 of labor power. So is, 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 yeah, the thing is very complicated because, uh, Marx here you know it's like the difference between early and late Marx while here you might attribute some kind of subjective qualities to the worker uh, once again you know he didn't have the ability to understand how um, forms of mediation work that's why in capital is um, you know, there is these discussions whether, you know, the subject becomes capital, you know, I mean, there is a very famous, um, you know, quote in capital, which some people, you know, especially in value theory, they really, you know, the cross versions, they took it to the extreme, but it can becomes value becomes the automatic subject. Because uh, there is no, you know, so, so basically, in capital, there is no uh, on the later marks, there is no account on the subject or like what the subject is, you know, it's just like, as far as I'm understand is just trying to understand what capitalism does. Um, I don't know if this answers your question. Uh, so I, the, as far as I understood the subject object relationship is a kind of constant ongoing process within the capitalist process. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I want. Can I say something? Please, with, please. With regards to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of uh, my apologies because I'm uh, uh, I'm never very systematic about this this stuff because I have no no prior uh, practice. But I I I I'm I, I was uh, thinking of uh, something I remember Ray Brassier, uh talking about right at the beginning of his talk in the document of thirteen sessions, where he talks about uh, Entfremdung. Uh, the German word for alienation, and he decants it into, uh, if I'm not mistaken, two possible meanings. And one of them is something which very strangely uh, seems what you were saying that the uh, Xenofeminist Collective may be doing, naturalizing this uh, this movement, the this in, this version of Entfremdung, which is putting oneself outside Outself, uh, outside oneself, putting oneself putting oneself outside, which means, uh, which seems to imply that there's a, a natural uh, uh, a natural um, aspect to to this movement, which is prior to uh, capitalist uh, a capitalist mode of production. Well, um, I think they are, I mean, he was working, I mean, there is this, um, yeah, great. Thanks for that question. It helped us to clarify, you know, I mean, there is this um, alienation in Marx is, um, has two different translations. Uh, well, sorry, in our, the original German, there is Entfremdung and Entauserung. Entauserung is more perhaps translated as externalization. And, um, in fact, Ray has a text uh, about this relationship uh, between Enfrendum and Entoserum. And for him, um, is, um, externalization is like this constant, and it makes it, it's a very processual, it's a very procedural, a process, procedural, I don't know how to say, it, you know, like process, it's not one or the other, it's just like a kind of, uh it's a dialectical but you know in a very you know fine grained or you know like ongoing kind of process um which one might kind of do a critique that is not a kind of revolutionary all or nothing type of uh approach but it's perhaps a much more uh at least at the level of conceptual uh explanation much more refined so 
externalization is not uh, forms of externalization. The thing is that here he brings um, Hegel, so you know, there is a there is a still has kind of positive qualities, um, and um, and friendum is you know like mm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is you know when it it becomes kind of reified, so there is um, within the process of alienation there is this dialectical thing that is not um that is constantly in, in movement so there is a, a kind of um and maybe here i'm jumping too much or you know like uh, you know but there has kind of positive qualities uh within the whole movement of alienation and um and I'm sure we will get back to this because this is uh, kind of crucial. And I just uh, realize. I would also like to make a question. Please, is, please, please. It is about uh, could you elaborate more on this idea of realization that is lost through labor? What would this realization on the part of the worker be? It, it points out to another type of realization or, or something like that. And what could be this, re what could be this realization? In something object in in uh, taken from points from uh, objectively and subjectively. Yeah, I think we will go into this. I mean, um, be, be, Marx w will certainly go uh, into this. Uh, hopefully, we have enough time and everything. But uh, we will. He talks about these different forms of. Uh, uh, so. That is, I mean, realization, I don't know if it's the right, you know, but like the impossibility of, you know, the worker to realize itself because of the process of alienation, because there is this different four uh, forms of alienation uh, of, you know, a kind of uh, the estrangement that it produces, you know, uh, first to nature, um, them to its own production, to its own kind of capacity for production and socialization, uh, to uh, the species being, to that kind of general qualities that we have as humans, and uh, lastly for to each other. So I guess, yeah, so the alienation is a derealization of all these possibilities or capacities or these uh, relations. That's how, how I understand uh yeah if that makes sense and maybe i bring now how you know a quote by lukacs in which this with a you know subject object relationship which is kind of necessary for his understanding of reification uh, Sorry, sorry about this. I have to. I have to improve my my abilities with this. Um, so, okay. So this is a quote from the. Is it okay that I'm jumping from one to the other uh, text, or is it a bit too much? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. Objectivity and subjectivity, in, according to Feuerbach. Uh, somebody will mind to read yes to have different voices and yeah I, I can do it great thanks objectivity and subject objectivity and subjectively um objectively a world of objects and relations between things springs into being the world of commodities and their movements on the market the laws governing these objects are indeed gradually discovered by man, but even so, they confront him as invisible forces that generate their own power. The individual can use his knowledge of these laws to his own advantage, but he is not able to modify the process by his own activity. Subjectively, where the market economy has been fully developed, a man's activity becomes estranged from himself. It turns into a commodity which, subject to the non-human objectivity of the natural laws of society, must go its own way independently of man, just like any consumer article. What is characteristic of the capitalist age, says Marx, 
is that in the eyes of the laborer himself, labor power assumes the form of a commodity belonging to him. On the other hand, it is only at this moment that the commodity form of the products of labor becomes general. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, how, I mean, that's the process of reification that you just uh, make um, into, you know, like, what is uh, socially produced, it becomes this thing, a commodity that it entails, it, necess it requires the totality of um, its relationship to all other different commodities. Um, so, yeah, I just, please, please go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna just I, one of the things that I was thinking about that it, with like in reading the Lukacs is the role that like calculative rationality specifically plays not you know there's a kind of a specific determination of, of reason in its calculative form as a kind of um, as kind of articulating the logic that governs this this objective world of objects and relations that that spring into being um, and is part of this maybe in that there's a kind of a full in, like I, I guess one of the things that I, I was I was wondering about is if Lukacs has a position on a, like a pre alienated economic relation because it seems like in in certain parts there's a discussion of uh, natural units of production more organic productive relations and and that sort of thing and it seems in a way that um, this kind of calculative mode of rationality imposes itself in the process of production and then comes to dominate it. Uh, in this kind of objective commodity relation. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the question, yeah, it was about kind of like, what, it, like, yeah, like what, what is the, was there a proceeding in like in the natural unity kind of? And if so, like what leads to this kind of like, um, in like this, this, uh, this kind of emergence of abstraction or abstractive generality in, in, the, in production? Um, there's a general question or people have thoughts on that. But. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody else has like a answer or a point that wants to make, that's, um, that's for sure. Um, otherwise I can give it a go. And it's very interesting to, um, in regards to, you know, what's the emergence of abstraction, you know, how does it emerge? Um, and here there are different kind of, uh, accounts. Uh, as Ray, you know, mentions once, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, as you will see through the whole thing, I'm extremely influenced by Ray Brasier's thinking, so I will be bring him quite a bit. But, you know, while, for example, for the Greek, or, you know, like the, you know, the Platonic idea of, you know, of Plato or, or Socrates, you know, it's, it was only, you know, um, it was not it could only be, you know, idealized, you know, this kind of ideal quality of abstraction. But in uh, capitalism, through the way that um, the concrete labor um, becomes abstracted, i.e. Uh, exchangeable, it becomes uh, instances of uh, empty homogeneous labor time as Benjamin will come it uh, will call it so it's like just exchangeable amounts of time that can be basically you know relate to anything else they, they, they become this kind of uh, particular um, this can only happen when you have uh, the process of exchange, abs exchange abstraction happen at the total level, you know, and, the, and then the here, I think Lukacs is pretty good at making the differentiation when that can occur and the level of abstraction, when can it be kind of generalized and when it cannot. I think that there is a kind of a good accounts and here maybe the concept of real abstraction that Son Rettel has is helpful because he goes in to explain very 
uh, carefully how this occurs, you know, how the level of um, uh, how how is such a I'm well, maybe I here I just bring a kind of a stupid joke before I, we make a break. I'll, 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 we'll do this and then we do a short break. But anyway, so in trying to work out, you know, like in presenting the real abstraction, the idea of real abstraction, I, I kind of made this comment of like, okay, to the rationalist, you know, rationalist beware, um, real abstraction, minds, mind fuck, I wanted to say, mind screw, you know, because basically uh, real abstraction are non-empirical tractable they have to do with precisely this process that are occur in the labor process where the concrete labor is getting abstracted and then that relates to as i said to the kind of uh, commodity relationship uh, and value you know so it's it's a kind of um, abstraction that we are reproducing it in our own engagement within capitalism but that it cannot uh, we cannot have access to it only through i guess cognitive capacities can try to make sense out of it but you know what in previously the greeks you know the ideal could only thought uh, be thought uh, yeah in thought you know, here we are realizing it in practice at the level of this totality because the real abstraction is literally, you know, occurring at, at, at our own, you know, within our own activities and self-reproduction. So, and this is something that I think so far, you know, the rationalists have not taken into account because then it goes into the question, okay, but then what kind of forms of abstraction real abstraction our engagement on real abstraction produce in thought and i think uh this is i mean as i i think uh both um lukacs and son rettel help us to be quite uh careful in our ability you know our cognitive abilities or at least it kind of they bring into question what are the problems emerging with this? And maybe I bring just like a kind of um, issue because in fact, some Rettel can have a very problematic understanding of abstraction because for him, it goes back to Parmenides and how by engaging in the moon, uh, in the, with money, they could, you know, Parmenides, Parmenides could have come up with this idea of the one, this kind of abstract, uh, you know, the one as a kind of general, you know, abstract uh, totality kind of thing. So for him, it's already there where the kind of forms of cognitive abstraction start to become uh, prevalent and then necessary for the later on development of uh, real abstraction. But that's a very, that's, mm, I think, it's not it's problematic or at least it has been criticized by not taking into account the specific and historical moments in how uh, the abstraction of concrete labor starts to become kind of uh, intertwined within the value relationship and yeah, this is yeah to be discussed. Um, does anybody have some question or comments before we take a little five minutes break? I think in the text there is a take on on this and this kind of start of abstraction when when uh, when he puts uh, the barter kind of thing when the society starts to barter, but this barter tends to have the same use value as to the community community that has this this commodity type of thing. I think there is there is one can can situate there. This is starting in a, in a, some kind of abstraction, but it's not totally abstract. 
I don't know how to say that, but yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody else or uh, yeah, um, uh, or maybe we have maybe a five minutes break just to go to the bathroom and have something to drink and just like a bit of refreshment. Does this sound good? Okay, I take this yep to be for everybody. Okay, cool. So in five minutes, I have yeah. So we we'll see us in five minutes. Okay.
Um, hi, everybody. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, Neef, um, one question. I'm not sure if you are there. Yes, hi. Ah, great, great. Um, how long will you need to do the final kind of things that, um, I guess, around the presentations and the assignments and that kind of thing that uh, Rafael said that you would do? Yeah, I think um, not very long at all, maybe five to ten minutes, because I think we're very familiar as well. So, yeah, ten minutes maximum. Great. That's that's great. That's really good. So then we leave um, at the end these ten minutes and mm -hmm. uh, I guess, yeah, this will finish. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have different times. So that's kind of, uh, well, let's say, in almost 45 minutes um, and uh, 45 minutes. OK, it's not much. And then I would like, let's see if there is time to leave, uh, to have a bit of um, both for general, you know, to try to bring this into a more general kind of uh, framework and set of concerns, you know, that people have and for critiques, uh, you know, like kind of if somebody feels that this format so far is, you know, it could be improved or it's not working for somebody, you know, just so that means, well, let's say, yeah, in around half an hour, more or less, or a bit before we try to set a bit of time for that. So this means that we don't have plenty of time and that we should kind of kick in. Um, I mean, the good thing about um, it, you know, that, that basically Mark's text <clears throat> that we have here is not so long, um, but I'm sure with the discussions will kind of uh, be expanded. So maybe if we continue uh, and go for the next slide, that will be great. Uh, uh, can I ask a question uh, yeah, before? Anytime, anytime yeah. Uh, it's, re it's regarding the concept of Gattungswissen. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it varies, the interpretation var varies a lot with the translation. And uh, I'm really stuck in this concept because uh, Lukács uh, goes and uh, characterizes the principle at work in uh, this whole uh, alienation process. And he says that in the first place, uh, it occurs due to a mathematical analysis of work process. And in the second step, he says that in consequence of this rationalization, the human qualities and idiosyncrasies of the worker appear increasingly as mere source of error uh, when contrasted with these laws of uh, commodities. But, uh, I'm really having trouble to uh, identify what Marx, uh, what I think Marx is saying by species being with uh, these idiosyncrasies and characteristics that uh, can be listed, uh, I don't know, uh, that is uh, overdetermined in some way that you can localize and say, well, these are the essential characteristics of the workers of or of man, uh, because uh, in the way that I read it, uh, this species being is kind of underdetermined and generic uh, also. So uh, I don't know when we think about, oh, well, uh, what is it that we are alienating from? Uh, this kind of, it appears to me like as an empty form, because when uh, Marx says that uh, the roots of the problem for man is man itself, it's, it seems like a, a tautology that it's empty in, 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 in significance or, or meaning better. I, that's great. I think, I think that goes, uh, this question goes directly into the next kind of thing. The, that's because, as I was mentioning before, I mean, he's at attacking his enemy or his uh, point of critique is Feuerbach. 
So it's about around this discussion about religion, you know. So that was, uh, he makes that kind of like, no, you know, that that's what he says, but, you know, the roots of the problem are man, you know, like, is, um, which in, interestingly enough, also Lukacs starts with that, you know, like, uh, so is a tautology from the perspective of today and what we are thinking, but not from these times where religion was just like, you know, that there's like a, a very radical kind of claim that was part of uh, these discussions at the time. Uh, but I think um, we can go, um, I'll go and share my screen and go exact uh, to that moment in which um, Uh, and in, until the discussion of uh, Gatun's Besen, um, okay, uh, so it's actually the next one becomes, uh, okay, where did I have uh, the nation remarks? Gatun's Besen, um, uh, sorry about uh, my incompetence, and um, I definitely had, um, Okay, so it's the third one. It's, uh, it's the third one. Yeah, exactly. So basically, we let's go straight into the first, you know, the, this what I mentioned about these four levels of estrangement. And in the next one, we will get uh, to the Gattungsbesen, a small discussion. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Um, so if somebody else, just to have a new voice, would like to read, uh, and I'll put this, uh, make this bigger. Sorry about that. I can read. Great. Um, I'll, I'll try to make it bigger. I get confused. Um, uh, if you can you read it already, or is too small? I can read it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, first two forms of estrangement. In estranging from man one nature and to himself, his own active functions, his life activity, estranged labor estranges the species from man. It changes for him the life of the species into a means of individual life. First, it estranges the life of the species and the individual life. And secondly, it makes individual life in its abstract form the purpose of the life of the species. Likewise, in its abstract and estranged form. For labor, life activity, productive life itself, appears to man in the first place merely as a means of satisfying a need, the need to maintain physical existence. Yet the productive life is the life of the species. It is life engendering life. The whole character of a species, its species character, is contained in the character of its life activity. And free conscious activity is man's species character. Life itself appears only as a means to life. So, yeah, here we get the different forms of separation um, that I was mentioning before. And uh, unless somebody has a question, maybe we go into the next, which is like this third discussion uh, on, on this species being. So, yeah, somebody, if you want to continue reading, that's, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, third, estrangement from species being Gattungswesen. Sorry, just to, the titles are mine. So please just, uh, if you find them stupid or not helpful, you know, just, so like, yeah, but that's, that's just to make you, you know, yeah, please. I don't know what that word means and I just said it. Um, the animal is immediately one with its life activity. It does not distinguish itself from it. It is its life activity. Man makes his life activity itself the object of his will and his, of his consciousness. He has conscious life activity. It is not a determination with which he directly merges. Conscious life activity distinguishes man immediately only because he is a species being that he, that he is a conscious being i.e. that his own life is an object for him. Only because of that is his activity free activity. Estranged labor reverses the relationship so that it is just because man is a conscious being that he makes his life activity, his essential being a mere means to his existence. So um, I don't know if this helps you um... To, yeah, the question in regards to what is it, I mean, but it's, it's basically, 
that our capacity, I mean, it's pretty much uh, like what Wilfrid Sellers uh, kind of, or, you know, the, 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 you know the, at that time, the argument that I heard from Diana Bauer, uh, Diane Bauer, on the feminist or her own take in the femini uh, of the xenofeminist approach to alienation. So it's that you have the ability to produce your own, you know, consciously create something out of nothing. Um, and this is something, there is a very small sort famous passage in Capital in, in which he marks brings the the bees, you know, the bees that ha can construct, you know, very complex kind of forms of uh, architectural, you know, within their own structure. But, you know, it's not, they don't have the ability to conceptualize it in their consciousness and then to realize it. So that's a, you know, the kind of very crucial distinction that even though here he's making that that's a kind of uh, emphasizing that characteristic, characteristic in regards to what the human, you know, and its capacities and its relationship to consciousness is, uh, then, you know, this is just like a differentiation he just makes in regards to the, you know, what our metabolic uh, relationship to nature is differs from that of the animals. But yeah, as I mentioned, this at this time in 44 is still kind of part of all these discussions with Faulbach and uh, Bruno Bauer, you know, in regards to replying to some of the challenges that Hegel and his system was bringing to, yeah. I guess within German idealism. Um, yeah, there are some questions. So if not, maybe we go. Um, I, I'm I'm not getting. Let's see if the the dark father of trans marks the dark father of transhumanism. Nice. Uh, yeah, Cassia, does it help you this, um, like really getting back to it? Does it help you or is it still you have questions in regards to, yeah, what does this mean? What does this? Uh, no, once it is uh, localizing this specific discussion with Forba and Christianity and all that, I, I, I think I, I get the point. Thank okay. you. Great. And we can continue a bit more with this one, uh, with the next, um, with the next uh, slide, if somebody can read it. Uh, I can read it. Great. Uh, can you make it bigger? Yeah, it's, I'm trying. Uh, LibreOffice, first I was able to basically um, do, do I it. I think F12 might work. Okay, uh, uh, F, F12. Uh, yeah, here it was said F5 and it didn't. I'm sorry about this. No. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of locking you away because like before you had the option, I think. Yeah, like well, now uh, I'm going to save it as something else. It's, ah, I think there must be a window that is telling me something. And then, ah, it's here. Sorry. Just that's, <laughs> that's what it was. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> sorry about uh, this. So we were uh, strange and then this one. And then F1 thing and this is worked. And then, uh, sorry, I have to. The alienation that they were working on, the notification, the two percent, and this one. So, yeah, if somebody can go ahead. Okay, yeah, free no more. It is just in his work upon the objective world, therefore, that man really proves himself to be a species being. This production is his active species life. Through this production, nature appears as his work and his reality. The object of labor is, therefore, the objective objectification of man's species life. For he duplicates himself not only as an unconsciousness intellectually, but also actively in reality. And therefore he seems himself in a world that he has created. In tearing away from man, the object of his production, therefore the strangest labor tears from him, his species life, his real objectivity as a member of the species and transform his advantage over animals into the disadvantage that his inorganic body, nature, is taken from him. 
Similarly, integrating spontaneous free activity to a means strange labor makes man's species life a means to his physical existence. The consciousness which man has of his species is thus transformed but estrangement in such a way that the species life becomes for him a means. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that we basically is, is uh, yeah, that ability that usually these forms of externalization and uh, capacities that, you know, we could have to transform the world and realities, a kind of inversion that then the opposite, you know, I, our own objectification in this general unconscious totality is turning us and into, into, you know, just then he later on goes in to say that the only moments that we feel ourselves is when we have this physical, you know, have to go to a toilet or have to eat or have to, you know, that's the kind of only moments of when we have a bit more of a, of our own, you know, existence in relationship to a species being. But um, yeah, it's kind of crude, but uh, it's already, you know, like, I mean, if we think of precarious and precarity labor and everything is, uh, and not only that, but like the famous capitalist realist claim by Mark Fisher, or you know, like that there is no alternative or anything. It's like it's like seven uh, million people in this world, and you know, our future is just dictated by the value form. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy thing to think about. Um, yeah, so if anybody has some questions or, or feels more positive about you know, our potential. I, I wanted to ask Please. maybe a little bit about this idea of uh, discrete, degrading spontaneous free activity, because it seems like that notion, the idea of the spontaneous free activity of, of conscious life, um, feels like it's the correlate to the to the alienation that's produced by the value form. And is that the seat of the potential essentialism in Marx? So that Marx said there's this idea of a kind of immediacy or like a kind of a spontaneous immediacy that on the other side of the, like, you know, uh, like if in the release perhaps, or the, the, the letting go of the commodity form, there would be some kind of immediacy there or some kind of spontaneous, um, pre-alienated or post-alienated ground because if you think about Hegel right like you know in Hegel man is kind of the alienation of God in relationship to himself there's this kind of passage in which you know absolute spirit moves through man towards the reunification of of spirit with itself in a certain way right and it feels like Marx has this slightly reverse where man is alienated from himself on the way back to himself in a certain way um and I guess the spontaneous free activity that's where man is is on the way back from if we use these kind of essentializing terms which seem like are still operative in the like the deeper layers of marx's logic here yeah 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 and uh but unfortunately or like kind of you know they, these kind of qualities or praxis you know it's like then they disappear in later you know because if he starts to like you know it's like not presupposing anything or you know stop presupposing that there is something a word that can be that as you mentioned behind or underneath or the potentiality that is uh you know that is taken away from us you know th that all that's kind of uh you know very um uh, how do you say you know like appealing type of you know like clues of what it can be that can he he does up you know he takes it you know away because he i guess doesn't want any form of a speculation um but so then the the question of freedom or you know communism you know while here in the next chapter of the manuscripts is obviously the return communism is this real the potential to realize this spontaneous free activity and 
Gatun's Besen realize, you know, the potential of Gatun's Besen kind of realize uh, that as far as I'm, I know I'm aware, disappears in the later marks because I guess he does just want, doesn't want to speculate. And, uh, but yeah, so but he did here are some essentialist kind of, you know, qualities that I guess makes people be suspicious about this uh, early Marx work, even though it was also extremely influential in the course of the 20th century, as I think some people mentioned. And, but yeah. I, I would argue that also, you know, it's, uh, Lukacs also, you know, contains with this anti you know, like, you know, by this, these descriptions of this overall kind of rationality that takes over, you know, it also has that kind of like, okay, what is it behind this capitalist forms of rationality? And like, you know, I think there is there, there's some Kierkegaard and like kind of, you know, I guess he was influenced by George Sorrell and, you know, he did the translation of Max Weber. So it's like, okay, they, they both, I think they contain uh, the seeds for, you know, being criticized as essentialist or, you know, like, oh, the, the, certain romanticism, perhaps, maybe it's a strong word, but yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, I was gonna, I was also just gonna add in relation to that is it seems like the, in Lukacs, there's a, a bit of a, a slightly different take on this kind of essentialism in the sense that, uh, and this was brought up, I think, by Cassia in the discussion of the, the errors and the aberrations in relationship to the quantitative structure of, of rationality in a way, because um, it seems like what's being lost in Lukacs is a kind of like subjective quality type, like type thing in, in its integration into a total quantitative kind of structure, which is, I think, related to this idea of spontaneous reactivity as like, you know, you might say the the kind of um, like it, it, it has to do with the relationship, I think, between quality and consciousness as being this place in Lukacs, and then in being this place where that quality of consciousness or the quality or the subjective experience is then decomposed into a calculative rational structure. And that's the kind of the loss of the essentialist there. And you can see the link maybe to Metzinger in certain ways, but how that that loss of the sense of a, an originary quality of consciousness or subjectivity into the alienating structures of, of kind of cold hard rationality or whatever you want to call it um is, is also maybe there's a kind of essentialism working there too mm. so yeah which i guess what i'm trying to you know what i do in my book is to try to say like well you know i mean in fact it is also thanks to science even though it's tainted by you know, uh, by being part of the capitalist process, you know, capitalist mode of production and, you know, being part of these divisions of labor. But nevertheless, it allows you to identify these forms of mediation that undermine this more romantic kind of uh, conceptions or presuppositions about what is it about ourselves. So. So I think we can, yeah, I, I think we can use, uh, or, you know, with the help of people like Metzinger can, you know, undermine the essentialist tones of, for example, these two texts that we're talking about and actually take the other kind of a critique that I think is very valid, you know, I, you know, how our engagement in capitalism uh, produces these forms of, um, uh, yeah, alienation, you know, but maybe, you know, it can also help us to understand the relationship between alienation and subjectivity, which is extremely complex and difficult. And obviously here is not, uh, even though Marx, as we have, we've seen, is trying to, uh, perhaps from the perspective of today, naively uh, make it quite clear, uh, then we know from you know, what we know today that this is a much more complex, difficult relationship, but yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, to add really quickly in response to Katia in the chat, uh, who brought up the idea that this is related to the process through which time becomes spatialized. One of the things that I was thinking about is that movement of the kind of the quantitative extraction of, of basically temporal consciousness is actually really related to, I think, 
Heidegger is like kind of in framing and and because uh, if we think about for Heidegger, Dasein as you know some kind of analog to subjectivity is time itself in a certain sense, like the horizon in which Dasein is determined or subjectivity or the quality that I think we're talking about there is determined is time. And that is what's essentially parceled out. It feels like in Lukacs is this, this, this kind of flow of temporality is then reintegrated into um, this, this kind of inauthentic structure to use more high terminology. And so the question is like about that binary in a way, like the inauthentic, authentic kind of moment um, in that. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's people who claim that Heidegger was influenced by, by this text, uh, that he read it and he knew about it. But uh, yeah, that's, I think, is part of a ongoing discussion. But certainly some elements, they seem to, yeah, they, they there is quite a, a bit of, um, yeah, it, they relate to each other quite a lot. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if we are going, to, if we have time, maybe it's a good idea. We don't have much time, but maybe we. Uh, I'm, Martin, I'm, I think Mateo, uh, Mateos has his hand raised. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, because when I'm full uh, screen, I yeah. can. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. So this is not uh, that I was uh, uh, not. I basically, when I'm with the full screen, I don't see anything. So I have to kind of go into the chat and make, but then I, I don't see anything of the full, uh, of the Zoom. So please just make, uh, just uh, speak. If you're yeah. with you. Yeah, okay, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I think it is also um, related to what we've been discussing so far. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure which part of, of Marx's text this is on, but when he's discussing the when he's discussing the, the third form of strangement um, from nature, I I got this the impression that there is um, somewhat of an, an ambiguous tone because it seems um, at, at at that part I really got the feeling that he was talking about um, the relation of of um, man to nature in general and that in that process there is already an alienation an exteriorization and then there is this mutual dependency where where um it ends up that men serve in nature and nature serve in man and, and something like that but then he goes on to to talk about uh, this estrangement as already um positioned inside capitalist society and and then it, it just turns out that it all sounds like um, really bad, like a really bad thing that we are being estranged by this capitalist structure. And this is us being strange as individuals, as being strange as, as nature, which is part of us and etc. So it, I was just thinking, um, yeah, if, if, it is, if it is this ambiguous or, or I just didn't get it all right, because it, it seemed that there is estrangement and alienation even before um, we inside capitalist society, which is alienating us um, for this particular for the particular purposes of of capital of capitalist valorization. And but there seems that human activity in general produces some sort of alienation in itself in relation to nature. That's that's what I I got, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think this is a, a very debated. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a complex. I mean, as far, I I think for uh, for Marx, the alienation that he talks about is mostly you know with different forms of mediation that occur, and then while here he has this starting point, which is species being or man, then in capital and later on he refers to object alienation mostly you know for example money is the ultimate form of universal alienation so it's like forms of mediation or separation that separates the process but he doesn't refer so much as back to what is it you know that is being alienated even though he inevitably has to do this division between living labor and dead labor. So, you know, you know, the human is the only commodity that has the capacity to produce surplus, surplus value uh, of being variable capital. So there is an attribute 
to the human that is the source of value you know that it, well you know that that's uh, so in those regards that's how he sees um you know uh the human but uh in regards to whether there are forms of alienation i mean this alienation that he's talking about here is certainly specific to the capitalist mode of production i think this for these four forms of estrangement, and here we can go to the fourth one that he's mentioning, they are characteristic, you know, uh, as far as we can, and we can, you know, by reading, I think we can make an assessment, but I think they are characteristic. That doesn't mean that, you know, um, certainly he thought that, you know, capitalism contains the seeds for communism. So it's, uh, you know, that there is elements within it that they are, you know that they break with you know i guess forms of tradition or you know of much more form parochial forms of uh, of engaging with each other you know so it's uh there, there, you know that there is the seeds there to, to 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 communism for example and then what communism is you know the only th is, this is one of the few times in this the manuscripts that you get an account of what he means by communism then as i said later on he doesn't speculate much, and there are very, very few moments in which he address. Um, um, yeah, I cannot see now if the chat if there are other questions, but if not, maybe we can read uh, this form of estrangement, which is the the fourth one, and I think it's related to what we are talking about. So, if somebody would like to read. Or... We can read. I I didn't read anything. So okay. So, um, so, uh, so uh, uh, I just went to see if there was something in the chat, and then I just did this, and then I have to just do this. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so estrangement from from each other. Yes. Um, an immediate consequence of the fact that man is strange from the product of his labor, from his life activity, from his species being, is the estrangement of man from man. When man com confronts himself, he confronts the other man. What applies to a man's relation to his work, to the product of his labor and to himself, also holds of a man's relation to the other man, and to the other man's labor and object of labor. If the product of labor does not belong to the worker, if it confronts him as an alien power, then this can only be because it belongs to some other man than the worker. If the worker's activity is a torment to him, to another it must give satisfaction and pleasure. Not the gods, not nature, but only man himself can be this alien power over man. Yeah, I'm sorry, this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, I, I guess, um, that's. Uh, not good. Um, and I guess um, here maybe you get the seeds of, uh, you know, which also in, in Lukacs, you know, the way that by just reproducing this system is like a kind of, you know, because we reproduce ourselves as commodities, you know, and they, they you know, we pretend to have like commodities to have certain form of autonomy but this autonomy is autonomy vis-a-vis -vis capital which is a, a very problematic form of autonomy um, yeah yeah uh Martin, i think i i would just like to relay a, a question by eduarda because i think it could be a, a good point ah, yeah yeah please please uh, please yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Edward, i think it also connects a lot with what uh cassia and felipe were talking okay. about uh, so eduarda is asking what could be an example of a form of alienation outside or before capitalism and i think that this is um at least how i see and i'd like to know like uh, how, how do you visualize that? There, there is also a need of like checking into Marx, like 
uh, how how specific is his critique of rationality and uh, also like on the authors, the Marxist authors and how specific to capitalism that is, so like uh, wrapped into a specific form and so on. And uh, how much of that uh, critique of rationality is like in Lukács' case, a critique of rationality as such, which is of course embedded in historical forces and everything, but uh, it's a critique like more in a far more general and less limited scope. And uh, I, I was wondering, like, because wh when we talk about abstraction as well, like, uh, and uh, and like labor abstraction as being, because it is on the one hand, like a, a very particular feature of capitalist society and a certain form of quantification of labor and also like uh, that relies on the wage labor relation and so on, but also like you have, uh, I, I, at least how I see it, I would like to, to know how, how you read that. Uh, I have the impression that when Marx talks about like it's not it's not as if like capital gives birth to abstraction in a way I, I believe that like there there is uh, not only like uh, quant uh, there is like quantification of time and there are many of those types of features in like older societies even like you have I don't know money of account in like uh, despot uh, despotic Asian states such as like Sumeria Babylon and so on but uh, it's it seems to me that like the critique is always wrapped up in those two moments. So like, what is the specific about capitalist rationality and what is like, uh, what is this previous type of rationality that exists as like a human faculty? So like as a naturalist, uh, as a natural endowment of, uh, of the human as such that it that cannot be like limited to it, but that is like specifically related to him in that regard. And uh, yeah, this is, this is what, what I've been uh, thinking about it because it, you have to like parse those two types of like those two accounts of rationality that appear in Marx that sometimes they are like specific to capital and sometimes they are like generalized human qualities. Not in this in general, I'd say like more generally. Yeah, but um, yeah, I guess this will, um, yeah, I guess this, we will discuss these issues through the whole four sessions. It's, uh, I think it's the most difficult question that, uh, that I can think of. I mean, we can see in the way uh, how fetishism, you know, forms of fetish and, you know, forms of naturalization that occur or, you know, or how mystification occurs and um, makes uh, different concepts to appear natural. So that's a kind of very, sharp critique uh, that Marx gives. Um, yeah, they, but the way, you know, the question of how uh, capitalism determines consciousness, I think we will go through it as, as slowly. You know, I think we will, you know, through the, through the, you know, it will, it will be a core issue, you know, certainly, uh, it's, it's, it's crucial. I can only say that, for example, what Marx was doing, his form of critique, is to use, um, you know, what the kind of concepts of bourgeois thought that present to you, i.e., you know, society, or let's say capital, you know, you know, that's what he did, you know, it's like, so what it appears as kind of general, abstractions, he uh, then reconstruct them, you know, looks at the different forms of determination. That's why he developed all these categories. I, you know, uh, exchange, you know, the commodity form, you know, the exchange relation, you know, wages, you know, all this. So, okay, what forms of determination occur uh, within, you know, capital, let's say, and then develop critically these different forms of determination and then you reconstruct this what it was an abstract concept but then you have it with you know a kind of content that allows you to understand much better how it functions you know at the level of our own self reproduction so that's the you know marxist method of critique you know of kind of just to go and look what forms of mystification occlude, you know, so that's, you know, but then 
as I said, this will go, we will go into, you know, uh, this is a crucial question that we will go through. And uh, yeah, I'm aware of the time. So if it's okay, I will just like maybe um, for a couple of minutes, I know it's not much, but if somebody um, before NIF has to do these bureaucratic things, uh, you know, the, the kind of questions uh, that we need to go through. So if anybody has like um, either a burning comment, but maybe more general sense or a, a burning critique of the format that we been using in this first session, or somebody just has a brilliant idea of how this can be improved, uh, it will be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Okay, we don't need to do it now. I guess we will. We can do it also then, you know, like if, if nothing comes now, but like, please feel free to, you know, if, if something is not working or something is like boring or something is just like, oh no, this is not doing it for me. We'll try to find some other way. Uh, yeah, so Nif, if you want to go into the specific details of... Um, yes. We... Ah, great, thanks. Thank you for um, this. Uh, so basically, I'm going to share an Excel uh, spreadsheet like the ones that we've had in the past, and um, people should sign up in uh, according to the text that they want. And in groups of two, but no more than four people, they have to like, come together and um, form a, form a response to the text. So. Uh, what's different from other semesters is that it's introduced a collaborative component uh, and uh, then the respondents um, sorry the people in each group decide amongst themselves who wants to present or in what form they want to present and because there's a, a lot of us I think the presentation should be limited to about 10 to 15 minutes and then I think there will be a larger like engagement with the presentation uh, and I think that's it actually, it took much, it didn't even take five minutes. The sheet will, I will share it with everybody to their emails and you can sign up according to the text that you want to work on. Okay, so for, uh, from next week, we already will have presentations, right? That's the idea? Yes. And uh, no more than two, right? Per session or, or how many is, you know, the... Um... How many texts are we assigned? I think we're assigned only two texts in uh, for each week, correct? Yeah. Ah, okay, so that makes sense. So only for, you know there will be only one for. Okay, that's great. Yeah. That's that's really really good. Yeah. Ah, cool. Nice. Yeah, uh, also on the class folder, if you guys like uh, want to jump some access into it, it's like on the like together with the rest of the files, you can find the. The sheet over there like we want to give everybody the opportunity to present so like both uh be be very expensive like about the groups we can have from two to up to four so like ideally find other people to work with and like if we run out of text by some reason like we can always add like one more to make sure that everybody can get the credit of course and uh, yeah just uh, just make sure to allocate yourselves over there Yeah, great. Um, in terms of logistics, is there something else that we need to take into account or that's all? Uh, just like for, for the ones on the next week, uh, the next texts are Thomas Metzinger's text, the representation of deep structure of the phenomenal first person, and uh, then Ray Brassier's The View From Nowhere. So whoever is trying to articulate around those, just like go there. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm sorry, the, the Metzinger is quite many pages. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I yeah I didn't, yeah, sorry. And maybe, you know, yes, we have five minutes. Maybe if we can open it up, you know, like kind of, um, if, you know, if somebody maybe who hasn't spoken yet and has some, you know, just like, what did I think so far 
of what the issues that we've been talking about. Just very plainly and please feel free, you know, just like uh, uh, it doesn't need to be a very specific type, more like a kind of general, you know, whether this is these issues are helpful to understand better the reality that we are part of or, you know, your own practice or something. Just whatever you feel, but more, you know, opening up in this uh, broader sense. Please say something. I feel so lonely. Were, were you asking for those reflections now? Yeah, just like somebody to kind of, uh, but maybe somebody who hasn't spoken, spoke yeah. just to have a, uh, you know, more voices, if it's okay. For sure. in silence when I speak with this. I, I couldn't hear that. Somebody said something? Yes, I'm going to wait in silence for the next few minutes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you brought a new student. Yeah. <laughs> we actually did that. Run heels too. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Or just simply say hello. Loud is nice. No, we cannot hear anything. So uh, just one question, just to, you know, because this silence might mean something or not, but uh, is it intimidating? Is it, uh, you know, or is it, is it, is there kind of discussion intimidating or, 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 or you feel okay to say something? You, you can also write it in the chat. Anyway, we will have time to try to work through these very, very, very difficult kind of issues. But um, yeah, so if there is something, you know, if, if, if the discussions are not welcoming, maybe we can try to think about it. But if you feel it's okay, just say, okay, okay, this okay. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for yeah uh, yeah all the great questions and comments and um, I'm excited and I'm very much looking forward and also for your presentations it's gonna be great the, the people just do them sometimes at the beginning at the middle or at the end that's kind of totally open right I think in normal circumstances we should go in the beginning so then we can yeah. talk about structure the rest of the conversation and also um our interventions if you heard me wrong yeah uh, your your audience is very low needs oh sorry um i think that it's better for them to be in the beginning so they can encourage uh a conversation and also structure the rest of the um 
the, the session. But I think if I, at the end of the day, it's actually up to you. you know, time, whatever you want, and whatever you feel is, is more beneficial. Okay, that's, that's great. Yeah, that sounds actually good. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, yeah, I guess there is also the, the, the silences made me think of a form of, of discursive alienation. Uh, I'll, I'll think, and you know, I guess it will be part of the ongoing discussion. But uh, the question of whether it's productive or not, we will see. But anyway, so have a really great week, and we we'll see us next week. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you.